Good morning on this Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us again as a part of the worship of Gaston Oaks Baptist Church. Quite obviously, this past week has been something that we never expected to see happen in our own country. We never thought about a time in which people who are citizens of this country would storm the building in which is the very center of our nation, our government, our history, and our hopes and our dreams for the future. But we saw it this past week. Many people are saying it was the worst day in the history of this country. It was indeed a terrible day. We saw people from the top. We saw people from across the nation come together for the purpose of anarchy, of seeking to disrupt the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States in doing their duty in formally approving the election of our new president who will be inaugurated in a few days. It was beyond belief. We are in a troubled time. I've been hearing about families that are actually ha having members of the same family that are not speaking to each other because of the division in this country. This is horrible. It is horrible that we are living through what we are. But, as always, we believe as people of faith that God is with us and that he will help us and lead us into a new day. Would you pray with me as we begin our worship? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are always with us. You are with us in the good times, but you are also with us in the times that are so terrible. We ask that you will be with us today and tomorrow in our lives, but also in the life of our nation. Heavenly Father, we come to you today on bended knee, asking you to use us to heal our land, to find a way forward, a new beginning. Lord, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
this morning is from the introduction to the book of Genesis in the Message Bible by Eugene Peterson. Genesis uses words to make a foundation that is solid and true. Everything we think and do and feel is material in a building operation in which we are engaged all our life long. There is immense significance in everything that we do. Our speech and our actions and our prayers are all, every detail of them, involved in this vast building operation comprehensively known as the kingdom of God. But we don't build the foundation. The foundation is given. The foundation is firmly in place.
the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. He gave us eyes to see and lips that we might tell how great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all.
today in the series that we started last Sunday with the title, Beginning at the Beginning. And of course, this is a study. It is a walk through the book of Genesis to see what we can derive about the beginning of a new year from the very beginning of time itself. Let me read the first verse of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Last week, we considered those words, in beginning God. Today, we focus on one word. The word is create, or created, as it is read <clears throat> in the very first verse. The word create is bara in the Hebrew. And this word is used only in reference to God. And it means to bring into existence that which was not in existence before. How do you see, how do you think of God as creator? Well, some see God like a magician, like a magician producing a rabbit from a hat by saying the magic words abracadabra. Some see God as an engineer, more concerned with the minutia of function than anything else. Like Philip Yancey, one of my favorite writers, I see God as an artist. Yancey writes in this first chapter of Genesis, the very first glimpse we have of God is as an artist. Butterflies, waterfalls, bottleneck dolphins, praying manises, kangaroos, they were all his idea. This entire magnificent world and the world that we love and enjoy and see something new almost every day is the product of God's creative work. How we see God in creation so often is reduced to our view concerning the creation of the world in what the writer of Genesis describes as seven days. Does the Genesis account necessarily mean seven days as we know them? Seven 24-hour days. I'm referring to a biblical commentary for help in this regard. This particular commentary says that the term day is the Hebrew word yom, and it is used in three different ways in chapters 1 and 2. In chapter 1, verse 5, the first part of that verse, it is used of light contrasted with darkness. In the second part of that same verse, it is used of the combination of light and darkness, evening and morning. In the second verse, or excuse me, in the second chapter, the fourth verse, the entire period of creation is referred to as a day. The sun, which is responsible for our 24-hour day, was not in its place, according to the description in Genesis, until the fourth day. The end of each day is marked by these words, and there was evening, and there was morning, but there is no such formula prescribed upon the seventh day. The writer of the book of Hebrews contends that God's day of rest has never ended, 
but that God has been in his rest since creation, observing, admiring, caring, looking over all that he is responsible for, all that he has created. Now, quite obviously, the seventh day cannot be a 24-hour day, nor does the Genesis require that it be a 24-hour day. Now, I hope that this does not disturb you. And I, above all, hope it does not make you think that I am casting doubt on the scriptural account of creation. Let me say this very clearly. I absolutely believe that God was capable of creating the world in seven 24-hour days. But I'm also aware that Scripture in various places makes us aware that with God, time is very different. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, we read these words. New, do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. So I believe that the seven days are seven varying periods of time that could have been vastly longer periods of time than the way we typically think of time. Now, because I see God primarily as an artist in creation, I see God as one who knows what he wants his creation to be. And he is enjoying immensely the act of creation. Notice how amazing the Genesis account is in describing each part of God's creation, particularly for the creation of life, life itself, and life in higher forms in the later stages of creation. Also notice that God is directly involved in each stage of creation. Nothing is created by accident, but by the initiative of God. Now that's the primary reason I am not a Darwinist. Maybe you've heard the story about the gorilla in a zoo holding a Bible in one hand and a book about evolution in the other. And he was looking confused, so someone asked, what are you doing? The gorilla answered, well, I'm trying to figure out if I'm my brother's keeper or my keeper's brother. Now, I believe that God began his creation. But I also believe that God perhaps has used and is continuing to use the whole concept of evolution of creating over the eons of time, God continuing to allow his creation to develop, to become. He charged us to be partners with him, to be stewards with his creation, to take care of it. To me, that gives some light on this issue of climate change and what our responsibility is and what we should be doing. We also see God as an artist creating with joy. After each stage of creation, God steps back and admires his creation and the Genesis account says God saw that each part was good. Can you picture God create, enjoying creation as an artist enjoys his creation? Sometimes he laughs. 
Other times, perhaps, he cries. But both are reflection of joy in what he is creating. Paul once said that we, humankind, are God's workmanship. And the word workmanship in the Greek is poema. You know, we get our word poem from that word, a work of art. God enjoys his creation. I have noticed recently on social media how many times videos are placed on social media of animals. The wonder of the things that animals do. To see a baby kitten adopted by a dog. To see one species deciding to love and to take care of another. It is amazing to see what God has created I also believe that we need to consider God's relationship to his creation. Great artists often describe their act of creation as much like giving birth and feeling like a parent to their creation. I think that God is truly a parent to his creation, very much like a father and a mother. Let's go back to that second verse, or excuse me, yes, the second verse of the first chapter of Genesis, which reads, the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The word for hovering in the Hebrew is the same word as a mother hen hovering over over her chicks. It is not a stretch for me to believe that before creation, God loved his creation like a parent loves their unborn child. This suggests to me another reason why I see as why I see the seven days as a vast expanse of time. Consider this. Those of you that are parents, if you had been given the choice when your first child was born to have an infant born the way that infants are, to be a little tiny, precious baby that could be held in your arms, totally, completely dependent upon you. Or you could have the choice of having your child come into this world as a fully grown young adult. You wouldn't have to go through all of the trouble, all of the work there is in taking care of a newborn child. You would not have to experience the fear of your young child running out into the traffic. You would not have to go through the trying times of adolescence with your child. What would you choose? I don't think there's any question. I think nearly every one of us would choose to have our child born as an infant and to be able across the 18 to 20 years to see, to observe, to go through those troubling times by their side, to be there for them, to love them, to enjoy them, I think we would every time choose to go through those years. I believe that God 
deliberately across time has created his creation, his child, so to speak. Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3 describe graphically God's relationship to his creation. We've already considered the first one. In the first verse, first chapter, second verse, it says that God loved his creation even before he created it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, I think gives us an amazing insight into how God feels about his creation. You know that up until this verse, that every time that God completes a day, every time God completes a part of his creation, that he says that is good. He is admiring what he has done. But then we come to verse 18 in the second chapter, and God says, this is not good. You know, God said it is not good for humankind to be alone. God likely knew this out of his own experience. Many theologians believe the reason that God created man, God created humankind, was for companionship, for relationship, that God has this need to love because he is love. And so he has created us as his wonder of art, his poema, his workmanship to have us in relationship to him. But he also wants us to be in relationship with each other. Now think about that. Think about that with the backdrop of the tragedy of this past week. We saw something we never thought we would see. We saw the culmination of the division, the hatred, the suspicion, the doubts and the fears of the people of this country when that group of people stormed the very symbol of life in this nation, the very symbol of democracy. We have forgotten how to appreciate others, others of other color, others of different nationalities, others of different language, others who think differently than we do. May God help us in this new year to rediscover that which God has given us. We just need to recognize it and use it once again. The appreciation, the love of others as we love ourselves. May God help us. Heavenly Father, we desperately need your help. We need you to guide us to find our way out of the darkness and into the light, into a new day, in a new year. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. We thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning. We hope that both the words of scripture out of the book of Genesis as well as this worship this morning has been a time of refreshment and renewal for your soul. And now as we've been the people of God gathered together, let us be the people of God scattered, salt and light, making a difference in this world for Jesus' sake. Amen.